Coming up on tonight's episode, we are exploring an object that when discovered expanded our horizons further than anything ever before. We'll be learning how to spot the beautiful Dumbbell Nebula, and me and Izzy are going to take on one of the most difficult tasks in amateur astrophotography, to try and image a group of astronauts that orbit the Earth 16 times every single day. Can we keep up? Let's find out. Now our first wonder tonight is the only one in the entire series that is man-made. It's also the only wonder that I know for 100% certainty contains intelligent life forms on its surface. This is the International Space Station. Is it a bird? Is it a plane? No, it's one of mankind's greatest ever accomplishments. Right now, there are seven human beings aboard the International Space Station. And if you want to spot them for yourself, you'll have to be quick, as the visibility window is generally less than three minutes. I've sped it up a little bit here because I want to instead focus on showing you how the ISS actually looks to the naked eye. At its peak brightness, it can outshine Jupiter, making it very bright in our night sky. It doesn't flicker or flash, which is the best way to know for certain that what you are seeing right now really is a space station and not just an airplane. I've attached a link to a website in the description below where if you input your coordinates you can see the predicted times and brightnesses of the next visible ISS passes from your location. The ISS is free to spot and can really get people hooked on astronomy and stargazing. And as cool as it is to see with the naked eye, my mission tonight was to capture it with my backyard telescope. I set two telescopes up ready to go and even had my long lens camera primed and ready to capture it as it went by. In this shot we have a stunning collection of night sky wonders. In the bottom right we have the Pleiades star cluster, the bottom left we have the Hyades star cluster, and in that bright point to the top left is the largest planet in our solar system, Jupiter. Alongside it, those fainter points of light, those are its moons. So even without the ISS photobombing this shot, it's already an incredible view. Notice how the space station gradually gets brighter as it reaches its highest point in our night sky. Now the camera lens is too short to make out any distinguishable detail from the ISS, so you might be wondering why I haven't focused my attention on the telescopes instead of the camera. Well that's because I already know that in exactly 90 minutes, the ISS will be coming around again. And this time, it will be bigger and brighter. Better yet, this time around I have a beautiful assistant to help me go after this engineering marvel. You have to be fast and you have to keep up. Safe to say it was a proper game of cat and mouse that me and Izzy made into a nice little competition, although she wasn't feeling too confident about her footage and whether or not she'd captured the ISS. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nowhere near. Nowhere near at all. Upon closer inspection of my footage, we could see something extremely tiny that kind of looked like the space station if you squinted a little. Here's the raw footage of the best frames I captured, and here it is stabilised. By the process of extracting individual frames, here are my best shots of the International Space Station, which to tell you the truth, I'm really happy with. I'd call this a mission success. Wow. Was <laughs> that a supernova? <laughs> Funnily enough, observing the ISS wasn't the craziest thing we saw that night. About 20 minutes later, we saw something neither of us had ever seen before. Okay, switch cameras. You can film this. What the actual hell is Look for the eyepiece a genuine freak of nature. I mean, as stunning and unique as the ISS is, this was absurd. What the f The lens is going crazy, is that normal? Yeah, okay, switch, switch. Use this one. Really like this again. It's getting bigger. Yep. <laughs> you can't zoom, but it's good enough as it is. To see it swirling across our night sky was unbelievable. This is the footage that Izzy captured after it's been both stabilized and sped up. Look how rapidly the brightness and shape changes. So the question is, what off earth is it? What is it, Mitch? If I had to guess, that's a rocket launch. As it turned out, it was in fact the Falcon 9 rocket launch from Cape Canaveral several hours earlier. The spiraling formation you are seeing here is the freezing of the dumped fuel. These elegant plume patterns evolved as a rocket moved through our atmosphere. It's the kind of thing that you only ever really see if you are already outside looking up. And you get a bit lucky, and that's exactly what happened here with us. We weren't planning on seeing this, it just appeared. In fact, just last week I was trying to image Comet Lemon and another one happened to appear, this time with a string of light pearls alongside it.
So you can see the ISS on a very reliable basis throughout the year and it makes for a wonderful stargazing experience, which is why it earns a beauty rating of 53, a low power rating of 19, and a high mystery rating of 77, giving it a wonder rating of 50. Well now seems as good of a time as any to remind you that the ratings for this series are subjective. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So if you're thinking that I've been too harsh on the ISS in terms of ratings, let me know in the comments down below. Overall, the ISS ranks on our Wonder Wall, not last, but second last in 41st. So it could be worse. Let me know what your ratings would be in the comments down below and you could be with a chance of winning your very own Seastar S50 Smart Telescope. During the course of this series, I'm giving away 88 incredible prizes, from smart telescopes to copies of the soon to be released official 42 Wonders of Our Night Sky book. It costs you absolutely nothing to enter, all you have to do is comment below what your ratings would be for the free wonders featured in today's video. Last week, loads of you left incredible and detailed comments explaining why you felt each wonder deserved their particular ratings. It is fantastic to read and I'm really impressed by the community that's been built over the course of this series. A special thank you to those of you who also share your own personal and experiences with viewing these wonders, it's really insightful and I cannot explain to you just how much I enjoy reading them. You can enter into this giveaway a maximum of 14 times over the course of this series. That's once per episode. Best of luck. Now, our next wonder has only been around for 10,000 years, and in fact, it'll only still be around for another 10,000 years before it disappears. This might sound like a very long period of time, but in a cosmic timescale, this is a blink of an eye. So enjoy it whilst you can. This is the Dumbbell Nebula. The so-called Apple Core Nebula is best observed throughout the summer months as it sits high in our night sky. It's very easy to spot with your telescope and its nebulosity is extra apparent when using a $30 UHC filter. When it comes to imaging the nebula, it's an excellent beginner target as even with the help of a $500 smart telescope, its vibrant colors are obvious. However, when imaging in narrowband via our $1 million remote observatory setup, you can really see the full volume of the nebula and how far this dying star has shed its most outer layers into space. As the planetary nebula is so big, Hubble can only take a close-up shot of the Dumbbell Nebula, revealing these intricate drops of dust and gas. Personally, I really like it. It's one of my go-tos for imaging with a new telescope or camera, and that's why in terms of rating, it scores a 71 for beauty, 61 for power, and a 55 for mystery, giving it an overall wonder rating of... 62. Woof, would you look at that, and of a bottom five wonder featured in tonight's show, but don't worry because it's about to get a lot better. The Dumbbell Nebula does in fact rank in 37th position, but our next wonder ranks in the top 10. In fact, to be more specific and potentially spoil what's coming up, it ranks in the top two. This wonder is the most distant point of light that you can see with your naked eye. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the galaxy next door, Andromeda. Throughout our human history, the belief boundaries of our universe have continuously been expanded. From believing that we were the center of our solar system and that is all there was, to knowing the extent of our observable universe reaches to at least 93 billion light years in diameter. The discovery that we were in fact insignificant specks in the grand scheme of our universe first came in 1923, when Edwin Hubble observed a cloudy patch of light with his 100 inch telescope. Only the math for this one seemed really weird, because it looked as though Andromeda was a nebula, but the maths was telling us that it was well beyond the reach of our own galaxy. So the only logical explanation for it was that this was in fact another galaxy galaxy entirely. It's moments like these that make astronomy so captivating. The ability to witness and image something like this is unparalleled. 
This feels like the stuff of legends, but it's real. It's out there right now. You can go and see this from your back garden tonight. It's two and a half million light years away, which means the light from this galaxy has traveled unimpeded for the vacuum of space for two and a half million years, up until the point it hit the sensor of my camera. And now I've captured it. This is an image two and a half million years old. The Andromeda Galaxy is the most distant object you can see with the naked eye. The Seastar S30 telescope is able to bring out some tremendous colour in the Andromeda Galaxy. At just $349, it shows a clear distinction between the old red stars at the core and the younger blue stars in the outer reaches. The $1 million rig gives us an up-and-close personal look at the core of the galaxy and the menacing glow of the supermassive black hole at its core. And as expected, once again, the Hubble Space Telescope's view is far too narrow to image the entirety of the galaxy, so the astronomers in charge said hang on let's do something crazy why don't we create the highest ever resolution image of another galaxy ever this is a 1.5 billion pixel image well technically it's not the raw 4.3 gigabyte image kept crashing my computer but within this compressed copy you can see over 100 million individual stars each are very likely to have their own solar system their own group of planets there's a quite probable chance that within this image is another planet like earth where its inhabitants are taking pictures of our milky way galaxy and marveling at the galaxy next door. If you exclude our own Milky Way galaxy, then out of all of the hundreds of billions of galaxies in our observable universe, Andromeda is the one that we have imaged the most. This mysterious cloudy patch of light really was the tip of the cosmic iceberg. Once we had made detailed observations, there was no turning back. Our universe would never feel the same again. With the discovery of the true nature of the Andromeda Galaxy, our universe quite literally grew in size by a factor of one million. Whilst there are certainly better looking galaxies out there, Andromeda is a nice and easy target to image and observe in our night sky. Its true top quality is its mystery. How many centuries did our ancestors ponder what this unmoving cloudy island in our night sky was, only for us to now know that it is in fact trillions of stars, quintillions of miles away. For me, the Andromeda Galaxy is one of the ultimate wonders of our night sky. Now of a wonder rating of 86, does the Andromeda Galaxy have what it takes to take home the crown of the ultimate wonder of our night sky? We will just have to wait until next week's episode to find out. I'm Damon Scotty and I'm just kidding, we're going to find out right this very second. The Andromeda Galaxy actually ranks second on our leaderboard, which raises the question if neither the Andromeda Galaxy, Orion Nebula, Saturn or Jupiter are the ultimate wonder of our night sky, what could it possibly be? Leave your predictions in the comments down below. I'd be very interested to hear what you guys think is the ultimate wonder of our night sky. Right, so there we have it. That is all the wonders for tonight. Let me know what your own personal ratings for them are in the comments down below, and you could be in with a chance of winning your very own Seastar S50 Smart Telescope. Thank you very much for joining me, and I hope to see you again next week when we'll explore three more wonders. I'm Damon Scotting, and this was Astronomical. Next week, we're going to explore the galaxies in love, the appropriately named Horsehead Nebula, and the god of war, our red planet, Mars. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next week.